I am Carmen Norris, and you are now listening to the Bad Alibi Podcast. Dear Brandon, the boy I loudly love, the boy who quietly loves me back, I control you now. You know, I just gotta say, it freaked me out at first. I realized I wasn't just doodling and scribbling little love notes I only dare say to you in my daydreams. One day, it became real. I thought you and your uncivilized friends were playing a prank on me. Although I wouldn't have totally blamed you, just them. I was sitting in class, doodling about us after a test, and just like that, you began singing. Not in your head or humming, You then stood up and did a whole dance number and everything. It was about the boy you loved. And in the end, it was revealed that that boy was me. I know it sounds odd. And trust me, it's not something I'd ever usually do. But I was thinking about you and all of the rom-coms I'd been binge watching. It just, I don't know. It was like I was pushed into one of those rom-coms right with you. I just, I felt my cheeks get warm when you stood up suddenly, you know, sauntering down between the rows as you played the instrumental to Uptown Funk You Up by Bruno Mars. I know, I know, it's not super romantic, but it was amazing. See, we'd be such a fun couple. Anyways, I thought someone saw the doodles on my paper and it was some joke that would never die. Miss Jackson made you leave pretty quickly after you started performing. I was surprised no one snickered while looking at others as if they knew about a joke that I wasn't in on. They looked almost as surprised as you were. I scribbled over what I made and discreetly shredded it with my hands. It was weird. Maybe a coincidence. Maybe someone did see what I drew and I just didn't know. I left the doodles alone until that night. I was drawing and crying, captioning the drawings and crying even harder. And I created more where you called at that moment and said all the right things. Then my phone rang. Like in real life, my phone rang. You said, all I heard was hello. I'm sad to hear the pain in your voice, but also happy to hear your voice at all. I melted at those words. My heart sped up when I knew it was real. I stared at my tear-stained illustrations and smiled, thinking maybe I'd gone full-on delusional, but I liked whatever it was. I stopped drawing what I wanted it to be like. I didn't need to. Finally, it was happening. You and me playing this flirtatiously coy game of cat and mouse. There were parts of the conversation where I'd imagine you sitting across from me. We'd both smile and look away shyly after the other made eye contact for too long. The following day, I would have given anything to go back to that. I didn't know how long these moments would last, but I just wanted to live in them for however long I could. I was so excited about school waiting for what would happen next. Then I heard your voice. You were laughing. I stopped at my locker and coyly looked over at you. It's so unlike me, I know, but it felt cooler somehow. I mean, there is seriously no rule book on how guys should handle these situations other than the ones that say not to at all. But then I was glad that I had done it that way. I saw you holding hands with Lucas, giggling at his jokes that would die before ever being funny. I knew it was for my benefit that you said, I'm so glad we're back together, babe. You briefly looked at me right in the eye with a sympathetic look. That's when I decided not to try to understand the control my old pencil and scrap paper held over you. Instead, I decided to use it. That night at home, I started with a fresh stack of paper and let loose. I didn't slow down to let my pencil nor mine go at the same pace. There was only subconscious control. The rest of me was free from 
whatever was happening and such a weight was lifted. It's fun to let your frustrations out that way. I thought it would be more fun to watch whatever I put down unfold without remembering what I made after the first few words. I then threw the paper away, but not without hesitation. There was no turning back. I was feeling brave. The next day, I walked into class feeling more confident than ever. The first through third periods went by mundanely. I made it to a point not to look at you whenever I felt I'd probably see you in the hallways. It sounds so ridiculous now, but I ached for one of our stolen moments. If I knew I'd usually pass by you, I just kept my head down, eyes forward. Ugh. With those stolen moments. Even if it's one where you broke my heart, I ached for them. Anywho, study hall passed by and I hadn't heard your name or even seen you. I mean, I purposely didn't want to see you, but I realized I hadn't heard anybody else mention you either. But by the end of the day, the rumor started. Kids said everything from you were sick at home with chicken pox to you were being expelled for dating a teacher. But I heard your parents in the front office. You wrote a note saying that someone was playing with your head and you were really freaked out and had to leave to get away from whatever was happening. Why would I write for you to just leave? I wanted you to love me back. I don't know what I was thinking. It's kind of because I didn't slow down long enough to think it out. Later that night, I saw you on the news. People were panicked and there you were walking around with your heart in your hand. Your chest had a pretty big hole in it from where you ripped it out. In real time. I watched that gory wound heal. You looked into one of the news cameras Shaky from the crew who probably regretted getting as close in proximity to you as they were. And he said, I broke your heart, so I ripped mine out to give it to you. I'm sorry. Your words were hard to understand, but I knew what you said. I felt it. Heck, I wrote it. But now I've turned you into something that is being hunted. Something that loves me, but isn't human anymore. I wanted you to hurt, but you didn't deserve that. And I plan to make this right. I'm out of things to write on and we can't go out to the store because of the lockdown, which is because of you, which is because of me. But don't worry, I'll fix this. I'll make it so that none of it ever happened. No one will ever remember any of it, but I will remember to leave you alone after all the damage I've caused. So, dear Brandon, I'm sorry I tried to control you instead of my pride. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Bad Alibi Podcast. I'm your host, Carmen Norris, and I really appreciate you. Um, If you want to stay up to date, please remember to follow along wherever you are listening. Also go check me out on Instagram and TikTok at author Carmen Norris. That's author C-A-R-M-E-N-N-O-R-R-I-S. Um, so that you'll never miss anything new that is coming up with podcasts or other stories that I create. Until next time.